What is up, you guys, and welcome back to another edition of the podcast. My name is Ramon, and this is Dad's Podcast Project. What I wanted to talk to you guys about today is hitting. Our three-year-old, who is probably about three and a half now, going on four, has been closed fist, whirlwind punching, throwing haymakers, jabs, uppercuts, just laying into us, his parents, as of late. And I'm, I'm reading around, I'm asking around, and I just don't seem to find, I guess, some of the solutions that work, that work for him, work for us. Now, some of you out there who are listening might think to yourself, well, if he's hitting, that's when it's time to implement spanking. And if you've listened to previous podcasts of mine, you'll know that I was spanked as a child and that it didn't really work for me. I didn't respond well to to being spanked. And by not responding well, I mean I would still continue to act out. I would still continue to, to get in trouble. And you think that after getting spanked, you would learn to do whatever was necessary to not get spanked again. Unfortunately, that was not the case for me. And I feel that that may, that my son being cut from the same cloth, that may be the same case for him. So going down that path of spanking, though some of my coworkers or some of my friends may be doing that with their children, it's not something that I want to implement with ours. So Some of the things I've been reading is speak to them in first person, speak to them more sternly, don't refer to yourself as mommy or daddy, try to be concise with what you're saying and sifting through all this jargon that I'm coming across over the internet, I feel like the the underlying tone of it is just pay attention, pay attention to your child and pay attention to what works. And it's all about trial and error. You have to try little changes and over time see if you get the results that you're looking for. So one of the things that I've tried with our son is timeouts. As soon as he hits, timeout. You get a warning if you're, if you're raising your hands in the air or you tell me you want to hit me. But if you hit me, it's just a straight timeout. You go and you sit on that chair. And now that's been met with a lot of just yelling and screaming and crying because he doesn't want to do it. And I can understand that. He's mad. But he also needs to be able to express to me that he's angry, to use his words and tell me why he's mad, what's making him upset. And therein lies where the listening is coming from on my behalf or my part because now that he's starting to express what it is that is bothering him, I'm faced with the question of what am I going to do about it? If he's mad that I'm not playing with him, why am I not playing with him? What is it that I'm doing? Do I need to be doing it? And can I not do it? Now, there are some things where we have to compromise and setting a schedule, which I'll get into a little bit later, comes into play. But what I have found has been the solution, at least for our son and for my family. I'm not sure if this will be a solution for you and yours, but it's what's been working for us is when I get home, Cell phones, TV, iPads, anything and everything that could be a distraction are put to the side or put away or turned off. That my attention is in the house. My attention is to my children and, of course, to my wife as well. But if my son wants to play in the room, I don't just tell him, no, not right now. I'll tell him, let me put my stuff down. Let me at least wash my hands because I just came in from work. And then we'll go play in your room. 
or if I need to grab a bite to eat before I get settled in, I tell them, let me go ahead and eat really fast, and then we'll go ahead and go play. And he's been very receptive to that. In the beginning, it was like, no, he wants to play right now, right this second. I don't care what you want to do, Dad. This is what I want to do. I want us to play. So after a few times trying to explain to him that, no, you have to respect that I am going to play with you, but that there are some things that I need to take care of before we can do that. And as I stated before, he seems to be really responding well to that. So we'll go ahead and play, and we really just divide and conquer because by the time I get home, my wife is just, she's tired. She's been with both our children, and depending on the day, she may need a break. So at least having one of them, which in this case is our youngest, uh, it's it's that break that she kind of needs because our youngest is starting to cruise, so she doesn't necessarily need to be held all the time anymore. She wants to actually start practicing to walk, and so that keeps her preoccupied. But playing with my son has been really helpful because I think that's inherently what he's been wanting all this time is just our attention some time where he can just be with us. His sister's not old enough to be able to play with him yet, but we are. So when whenever we come home and we're busy on our phones or watching TV, he doesn't want to do that. He wants to play. He's got blocks. He's got toys. He's got all these things or he may want to go outside. And so it's my responsibility, I feel, as his father to cater to that. So I do, and I have been as of late, and I've seen positive results yielded from this, from this change of, of just daily habit or daily routine. But then it comes to a point where, okay, I need to get up and get some chores done, or it's time to start winding down. We need to start cleaning up. And this is where the transition between playing to well, we can't play until the night. We, we do have things we need to do before bed, such as eat dinner or prepare dinner. Um, we have to clean up the toys. We need to get your sister ready for bed. We need to get you ready for bed. So all of these things, I try to give a buffer or like a heads up. And my wife does this like all the time. I, I forget most of the time. But she does it all the time. And she's always reminding the kids five minutes till this or 10 minutes till that. Or she starts setting a timer on her phone. So then there's an audible tone that, hey, we said in five minutes this was going to happen. The phone is now ringing. Now you know time's up. Time to get your PJs on or time to take a bath or time to eat your dinner or time to clean up your toys. Just a list of things that need to be done. And we're giving you time or a heads up that when this goes off, now's the time where we need to do it. And again, that was another thing that was another transition or another addition to the to the change in the in the daily routine that was not really met or well received early on. But over time it feels like things are starting to fall into a new a new rhythm. We're getting a new cadence in this household. Um, when they were, when they were very little, it seemed just easy to just sort of plop them down and here, play with your toys or here, here's your iPad or here, here's your food that you're going to eat. Now our son is a little bit more independent and becoming more independent with each day. So he might not want to eat the food that we prepare. And that can be another, another sort of point with which timeouts might be implemented because we're not running a Denny's here. We're not running a five-star restaurant. What we make for dinner is what is for dinner. That I think that's pretty, that's pretty on the nail with most households out there. So it's something that he needs to learn. And I don't think it's something that we need to yell about. 
I don't think it's something that definitely not something that needs to be punishable by spanking, but giving timeouts and hoping that he understands that, you know, these timeouts, they aren't forever, but it's a time for you to hopefully sit and reflect on why you're getting it. Because even when he would ask for a food that we wouldn't give him, they would go the fists clenched, ready to hit. And that can be like almost a spooky thing, like seeing seeing your 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 child coming at you like that. I mean, you can you can block really well as an adult, clearly, but my wife, she actually got caught with like a surprise swing. And it's like we, we, we had to have a long conversation with each other. How are we supposed to approach this? Because we can't let something like that get the best of us. We still have to remain in control as parents in this house over our actions and have a systematic and consistent form of discipline for him. Otherwise, it's just going to be all over the place. And now if you as a parent are... I mean, for lack of a better explanation, all over the place, then that's on you. You don't have to do things the way that I'm expressing. This is just one way with which I found works. Is it the end all be all? No, I, I, I couldn't even say that without feeling guilty. It is not the end all be all. This is what works for me and mine. If it works for you and yours, then that is awesome. But Everyone is different. Every household dynamic is different. Every just every child is different. And every parent is different, definitely. So you do what you got to do. But I've noticed the hitting has been on the decline. It's not as as prevalent as it was before. And the timeouts have become less frequent. They were pretty frequent in the beginning. I'm not going to lie. That was almost a weekend where it just felt like our son was on timeout like every 30 minutes, like timeout, timeout, timeout. Like we just spent the whole weekend because I needed him to understand this is what I'm willing to do for you because I don't want to go that, that extra level that some people might say, well, just get the belt one time and done again. It's not something that worked for me growing up as a child. I can I can probably put money on it. I don't think it's something that's going to work for him either. And I really don't want to go there. I think I owe it to to him and to myself to try almost every other option that there is before it even ever has to come to something like that. Now, if that's what you do, that's what you do. But that's definitely not something that, definitely not an avenue that I want to go down yet or hopefully ever. So again, the hitting, it's, it's gone down. It's how we've been kind of dealing with it. It hasn't gone away 100%. And it definitely flares up when guests are around. I think because he's just overly excited. So some of the times I think that the hitting is not necessarily out of anger, but just excited movements just gyrating and and getting into it hopefully we reach a solution sooner rather than later because this boy gets stronger every single day and i don't want my wife to have to catch any more of these fists coming from this little man it's just it's wild it really is wild sometimes but i'm interested to hear what your guys approach has been if you guys are raising any children that have a tendency to be violent towards you as the parents or even towards the siblings? How do you approach that? How have you handled it? Have you resorted to spanking? Have you tried excessive timeouts or just days worth of focusing on timeouts and and talking about it? Do you do some of the things that you've read online? Some of those things, I don't know what you've read, but If you have read anything online, feel free to leave it in the comment section down below or shoot me a DM 
I'm always trying to learn what I can do to be better. It's, it's definitely a job that comes without a handbook. There's no instructions included and you've kind of got to figure it out or rely on a community of your peers to kind of navigate these waters because raising kids today is definitely not the same as it was back then. Wow, that was <laughs> that was different. It's definitely not the same as it was back then, but there are similarities with the approach. So that's all I've got for you guys. I want to thank you for taking the time to listen. If you're catching this on iTunes, feel free to leave me a review. Five-star rating if you can. If you're listening to this on iTunes, or not iTunes, I just said that. But if you're listening to this on YouTube, thank you. Feel free to leave a like, subscribe. And as always, you guys, till next time, see ya.